Hi guys, postman's bin. Hopefully this is just a little super capacitor. There we go. One small, one farad super capacitor. Two point eight volts. I usually say two point seven. Well, never mind. Two point eight, one farad. Big cap. Okay. Why have we bought that? I almost don't want to do this, but this uh, Faraday. Oh, got a couple of springs stuck to it. This Faraday flashlight that you shake to charge up. I don't know what state this one's in because it hasn't been used for a while. Oh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. This one works absolutely fine. We've been through... Uh, at least seven episodes working on it, doing various different things to it. And in the last episode, I actually replaced the three cell nickel metal hydride battery with a three cell nickel metal hydride battery. I've been trying to avoid buying the battery because they're relatively expensive for what they are. That one was £6.99. That was the cheapest one I'd come across, and it appears to work absolutely fine. You always worry when you buy the cheap one, whether it's a good one or not. Um, I suppose I ought to do a bit of a resume as to what we've done before with this. Initially, I didn't know how to get it apart. So the first video of this, I actually did a failed disassembly where I got that far. Um, and get the bottom off. It does nothing. And you get the top off and it does nothing. And I thought that seam line along the edge there was where they glued the sides together. Then I watched a big Clive.com video and this comes apart up here. There we go. This one's managed to seal itself back together. The glue's reset on it. And there we go. That's it. There's the magnet. We'll leave that in there for now so we don't lose it. There's the coil. Very fine hair thin wires on the coil. Lots of turns. Then on this circuit board, oh, let's come a bit closer so we can see it. We've got four diodes to make a rectifier bridge so depend makes no difference which way the power is being generated it gets rectified into the right direction to charge up the battery and then when you press the button the battery is discharged through the led and also through that diode uh, through that resistor to protect the led so there we go so through my various uh, videos, we went through quite a few different things. One of the things, first things we had to do was repair the tracks because this, the copper tracks on the circuit board had been eaten away one way or the other. I thought it might have been the battery had leaked, but I couldn't see any evidence of the battery leaking when we looked at it. Got to be careful with this because if you pull it too hard, you'll snap those hair thin wires that you can't even see there yeah, there they are they have no strength at all so if you get carried away you'll break them right so you might be able to see the black track there that's where the track been eaten away entirely so that bit of copper wire on top of it is where i've uh, created my own track bypass the damaged track with a bit of wire did that and then found the original battery didn't hold charge. So 
replaced the battery with a supercapacitor. Supercapacitor worked, but it was a 10 farad supercapacitor. So it, you just didn't charge it up. It didn't matter how long you shook it for, you wouldn't charge up the 10 farads of the capacity. Uh, how far are we going in this story? That worked, but as I say, it was a problem. You couldn't fully charge it, so it didn't hold the charge for very long. Eventually, I bought a replacement battery. That goes in there. That works absolutely fine, but I did have it in the back of my mind. What happens if we used a one farad uh, supercapacitor instead of a 10 farad? So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to desolder that one again, put that one in, and see if we can actually charge it up. You probably don't need to see me do that because my hands will be in the way anyway. So I'll just desolder it, put that one in the right way round, positive this side, negative that side, pop it back in and see if we can charge it up. That's the supercapacitor in position. We'll tuck it back in place and see if it works. Just a quick test before we put it together. I'll just put three volts from that battery supply onto here. Oh yeah, it's charging up slowly. I don't know if you can see, it's just beginning to light up. So that's taking rather a long time to charge. I think that's going to be a lot of shaking. <laughs> this may not be as good as I hoped. Back together. There's a tiny little bit of charge in there at the moment. Just about to see that. So we will shake it. Oh, actually, I'll try shaking it while it's switched on. That is a little bit brighter. Oh, there we are. Yeah, we can see it. switch it off and try and charge it up. All right, we're in the hallway where it's dark. Press the button. Well, yeah, it's a light. I think we had more light with the nickel metal hydride battery. That is only a minute of shaking, but you really don't want to be standing there for hours trying to pump up your muscles. So yeah, it is working with a one farad uh, supercapacitor. It's getting brighter, isn't it? Yeah, we are charging it successfully. Question is, do I put the nickel metal hydride battery back in there, or do we leave the supercapacitor in there? Right, it's dark now, surprisingly enough, and I've been given this. Uh, a good long shake. I think we've been going for at least three minutes now. My arm is feeling numb. <laughs> oh dear. But if I turn it on, we do actually have usable light. So 
so you would be able to find your way around with it. Again, the camera will be doing white balancing and that sort of thing, so you can't see quite as well on the camera as I can just looking at the light the torch is supplying. But yes, I can uh, see my way around with it. It is getting dimmer. If I shake it, it does get brighter even with it switched on. But this really isn't practical. But the bottom line is the one farad supercapacitor is working. I think the three cell nickel metal hydride battery did better. But uh, yeah, it's usable if the camera can focus. That's the radiator in the corner of the kitchen. So if you had to use it to find the door handle or something like that in the dark, and you didn't mind sitting there for five minutes or so charging it up first. Yeah, that'll do. And as comparison, the homemade one I made, which lights up even when it's switched off when I shake it, Yes, it's flickery, but we're seeing far more with it. Right, if I actually switch it on, you'll see it's much dimmer at the moment. There you are, if I hold it close to something, we can actually see. But if I then shake it, quite a bit brighter. That's the one I made with a garden solar light. There you are. So that one's given us even more usable light. And that one's just an LED at the front there, no focus or anything. So I'll call that one a success as well. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave us a comment so I know I'm doing. And somewhere up here there'll be some links to related playlists. Thanks again.